Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we will talk today about systems of linear equations. Um, as usual, we have to start with definition. Well, first of all, system of linear equations is a system of equations. And you know the generalized um, form of the system of certain number of unknown variables, in this case n unknown variables, and this is the system of m equations. This is a generalized form. So we have m conditions, m functions actually, uh, of unknown variables and I uh, equalize them to zero. Now, so what is a system of linear equations? Well, obviously, each one of these should be a linear function of the unknowns. Now, what is a linear function of unknowns? Again, generalized format is the following. So that's the first equation. So the indices and the coefficients are first index is equation number, and the second index is basically the variable number. Uh, in addition, I put index 0 for uh, just a constant. Now, the second equation would be a 2, 0 constant, blue plus 2, 1, x, 1, plus 2, 2, x, 2, plus, etc plus 2n xn equals to 0, etc. And the nth equation looks like this. mn xn equals to 0. So this is a system of m equations uh, with n variables, x1, etc., xn, and every equation is a linear function. Linear means every variable is basically just by itself, um, without any kind of additional manipulation with it, just multiplied by some constant. And there is one free constant. Now, alternatively, and actually in many um, in, in uh, more frequently occurring cases, the constant is actually shifted to the right of the equation, so it will look like this. This would be B0, uh, sorry, B1, B2, Bn. Well, this is just an alternative form, exactly the same thing. B's are constants, each A is a constant as well. Now, can we consider any system of n equations with n variables that look like this a, a, a good and meaningful system of uh, linear equations? Well, the answer is no. First of all, think about um, these coefficients. A very important quality for each of these equations is that at least some of these, at least one actually, uh, of these coefficients should not be equal to zero. Because if everything is equal to zero, I mean all coefficients in one particular equation are equal to zero, then let's think about it. if the right part is also zero, then you have zero x1 plus zero x2, etc., plus zero xn equals zero. Now, what is this? This is basically identity, and any combination of x1, x2, etc., xn would fit this particular equation. So there is absolutely no meaning in including this particular equation into the system. It doesn't add anything. It doesn't subtract anything. Whatever other equations produce would definitely fit this one. 
So we always so, so we always assume that among these equations, which consider uh, which constitute a system of equations, we do not have this case. So in each equation, at least one coefficient is not equal to uh, zero. And by the way, if the right part of this zero uh, equation is not equal to zero, then it's basically a meaningless uh, combination because no uh, variables multiplied by zero and summed together would give a non-zero number. So basically, it would constitute an absence of any solution, which is not an interesting case as well. Okay, so the first requirement is that for every equation, there is some coefficient which is not equal to zero. Okay, that's number one. Number two, and it's also very, very important, I would like to talk about linear independence between these two, between these um, uh, e equations. Here is what I mean. Consider the following system. Now, think about this. If we subtract from the second equation, the first one, x and x, x and minus x would uh, notify each other, z minus c, z would notify each other, 2i and y will result in y on the left side, and 3 minus 1 will result in 2. So, basically, this equation doesn't really bring any new information. It's derived, it's dependent, it's linearly dependent in this case, on the two other equations. Which means, basically, it's exactly the same thing as if I don't have this equation at all. And I have only two equations with three unknowns. Which, as I mentioned uh, many times in the previous lecture about the systems of equations in general, this is usually the case when we have an, uh, an unlimited infinite number of solutions. And basically, indeed, you can have the solution like this. Um, uh, x is equal to 1 minus 2, this is y, which is 2, and minus z. y is equal to 2, and z is any. So, if z is equal to 1, you will have minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. If z is equal to 100, you will get minus 1 and minus uh, 100, so it's minus 101. So basically, uh, infinite number of solutions with z taking any real value and x calculated based on z and y is equal to 2. Any triplet of these numbers which correspond to this will be a solution. Not interesting. So basically, we would like to exclude this case when one of the equations is a combination, a linear combination, in this case, of the other. Now, I will um, spend a little bit more time uh, later on in this lecture about what's the criteria of the dependency, but sufficient to say that we would like to have the system of equations linearly independent. Now, linearly independent in more uh, strict sense of this word means that I should not have a linear combination of some equations to be equal to some other equation. Basically, that's what it means. Now, uh, the last requirement which I would like to put on my system of linear equations. So the first one is at least one non-zero coefficient is in any equation. Number two requirement is linear independence. And number three, I would like to have the case when m is equal to n. So number of equations should correspond to the number of variables. Now, obviously, if m is less than n, uh, as we saw many times before, we will have infinite number of solutions. Not interesting. Now, if m is greater than n, and um, system uh, is independent, then most likely we will have a situation of no solutions at all. Not, in, not, not, not interesting, neither. So this is a typical requirement for a system of n uh, linear equations with n variables. So coefficients, at least one non-zero in each one of them, 
linear independence and the equality between the number of equations and the number of variables. So, if our equation uh, system of equations satisfies these requirements, then we will consider it as a meaningful, a valid um, system of n linear equations with n variables. And we can attempt to solve it, obviously. Now, it brings us to the concept of solution. How can we solve this particular uh, system of equations? Now, I did briefly touch the uh, method of substitution when I was talking in general about um, system of equations. In case of linear equations, and again, we're talking only about good, meaningful system of linear equations. Now, in, in, in this particular case, we can always use the method of substitution. Always. And it always works fine. Now, here is basically the simple um, example x plus y plus z is equal to 6, x plus 2y plus z equals to 8, and 2x plus y is equal to 4. Now, what I would like to do is, I would like to solve this particular equation, system of equations, using the method of substitution, which is basically a straightforward method which does not require any ingenuity, you just know the algorithm, you know the methodology, just use it and you will get the solution. Now, how to get the solution to this particular equation? Well, again, the method is extremely simple. First, we use one equation, let's say the first one, and we express one of the variables in terms of the other variable. So, in this particular case, we can derive that x is equal to 6 minus y minus z, right? So by adding minus y and minus z to both parts, left and right, we get this. On the left, we will have only x, and the right, we will have this. And now we can substitute it instead of x to here and to here. Now, what do we have in this case? Well, 6 minus y minus z plus 2y plus z equals 8. And 2x, which is 2 times 6 minus y minus z plus y equals to 4. Now, as we know is supposed to happen, the method of substitution in one step reduces the number of equations by 1 and reduces the number of variables by one. So now we have only y and z, and only two equations. All right. Now let's simplify this. y minus y, and y is one single y, minus z plus z. Well, that actually nullifies each other. And the constant 6 and 8, so it's 2. Okay, the first equation, after simplification, gives immediately the value for y. That's good. Now, the second equation, um, minus y plus y, uh, no, minus 2y, sorry, plus y, that's minus y, uh, minus 2z equals to, this is 12, this is 4, so it's minus 8. Right? Okay. Now, obviously we can substitute this 2 here, and we will have minus 2 minus 2z equals minus 8, or... Um, 2z goes there, 8 goes there, it's 6, z equals to 3. Okay, so we have y equals to 2, z equals to 3, and now using this original substitution, we can say that x is equal to 6 minus 
2 minus 3 is equal to 1. So x is equal to 1. So my solution to this system of three equations with three unknowns is x equals to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3. Now, if you check against this system these three values, and I don't want to do it, but you have to do it, basically, you will see that this is a correct solution. So, let me summarize. What I did here, I have solved this particular system of equations using the method of substitution. I took one particular variable from the first equation, expressed it in terms of the other, other two, substituted into the other two equations, getting uh, only two equations with two uh, variables, which uh, turned to be a very simple one, and basically, even if it's more complex, I can do exactly the same thing again and again and again. On each step, I'm reducing the number of equations by one, number of variables by one. So if I initially have a system of n um, equations with n variables, after n steps of substitution, we can actually get to the solution. Straightforward, no ingenuity, lots of calculations. Great. Now, let me try to use exactly the same method in a general case of two equations with two variables. Now, what is a general case of two equations with two variables? Here it is. Ax plus by is equal to p, cx plus dy is equal to q. This is a general form of a system of two equations with two variables. Now, how can I solve it? Do exactly the same thing. Now, I know that at least some coefficient in every uh, equation is not equal to zero. Well, let's assume for definitiveness that this is x, coefficient at x, which is a, which means I can find that value of x in terms of y. It would be x equals uh, p minus by divided by a, right? Now, I substitute it into this, and I am getting only one equation with one variable y, which is c p minus by divided by a plus dy equals q. Multiply by a, open the parenthesis, C P minus B C Y plus A D Y equals A Q from which we can uh, say that Y times A D minus B C equals A Q minus C P from which y is equal to a q minus c p divided by a d minus b c. So this is the answer for y. And using this, we can find the x. y can be substituted to this, x is equal to a p minus b y. Uh, and b y is this. So it's a d minus b c and b times y would be a b q minus b c p. All right, equals. All right, common denominator above. So it will be A D minus B C. Uh, P times A D, so it's A D P minus B C P minus A B Q and minus B C P plus, sorry, plus, BCP, minus and minus with the plus. So BCP is out, so I will have 
and A I can factor out here. A uh, dp uh, dp minus uh, bq divided by A a g minus b c. I combine these divisions. A is also out, and this is my answer. Basically, this is x. Now, what's interesting about this? Denominator. You see, I'm dividing by this, so it must be not equal to zero, right? So this is a very interesting condition. So if you have an equation like this, AG minus BC must not be equal to zero for this particular solution to work. All right, just remember this particular property of the system of two equations with two uh, variables. But anyway, the method of substitution gives you the, gives you the solution in case when AG minus BC is not equal to zero. Okay, okay, this is, this is good. Now, but why and when AG minus BC is equal to zero? Well, you remember that in the definition of the system of, uh, definition of the good system of uh, N equations with N variables, I suggested that it should be linearly independent. So, my statement right now is that this particular denominator, being or not being to equal to zero, actually means that this system is or is not linearly dependent, uh, uh, linearly independent. So if this is not equal to zero, this is linearly independent. And this, if this is linearly dependent, then this is equal to zero. Now, I can actually very easily prove it. Now, what does it mean that the system is linearly dependent? Well, it means that there exist some numbers, u and v. So if I will combine my left parts with these u and v, I will get 0. That's what it means being linearly dependent in case of two uh, different equations. Because, as you understand, if one is linearly dependent on another, this actually is exactly the same thing. Now, so let's assume that our system of equations is linearly dependent. It means that there exists u and v such that the combination of the left part will give me zero with these coefficients. Now, what does it mean? Now, by the way, it should be equal to zero with any value of x and y. That's what it means, dependent, as functions of x and y. Right, so basically I have um, u a plus v c x plus u b plus v d y is equal to zero. Now, this is supposed to be equal to zero, as I just said, for any x and any y. What does it mean? How is it possible? that under any circumstances, whatever x and y take value, this is always equal to zero. Only in one case, when this coefficient is equal to zero and this coefficient is equal to zero. So basically we have this interesting system, again, a system of two equations with two variables. Now variables are u and, uh, and, and, and v. So my question is, when is it possible? When is it possible? It's possible only in this case. Now, what does it mean? Uh, sorry, this is D. OK, so I know that there is this particular condition. Now, I claim that I can actually find u and v from this particular equation. How can I do it? Well, we can do the substitution method again. We assume in the beginning that a is not equal to zero, so uh, u is equal to minus vc divided by a. Substitute to this, and we will have 
um, minus B C V divided by A, right? That's what UV means. Plus VG, it's equal to zero. We know A is not equal to zero. So let's do the common denominator. And what do we have? We will have minus BC plus A plus AG V equals to zero. Now, if this particular thing, again, EG minus BC is equal to zero, then we can find any value of V will, will, will actually fit. And then U can be calculated from this. Now, if, however, if, however, BC, uh, AG minus BC is not equal to zero, then V must be equal to zero. And if V must be equal to zero, then U must be equal to zero. And obviously, this is not a linear dependency, because yes, of course I know that zero times this plus zero times this would be zero. This is not a linear dependency. Linear dependency means that U and V are not together equal to zero. But again, if AG minus BC not equal to zero, then V must be and U must be equal to zero. So system would be independent. And if it is equal to zero, then we can find any number of values for U and V to actually uh, make the system dependent. Well, that's actually the proof that this particular expression, AD minus BC, is a characteristic property of the system of two equations with two unknowns, which basically determines whether the system has or it doesn't have one and only meaningful solution. OK, so the method of substitution works not only for the system of two, as I was just explaining, uh, equations in the general form, but if you really want to exercise, you can do it with three equations of three variables and basically any n equations. The system works always. The method works always. You just have to be very, very careful and do all these steps uh, sequentially. That's fine. No problem. Now, there is a, well, another method to solve system of equations. Now, this other method is called elimination, and it does require a little bit of ingenuity. It does require certain, like, observance, if you wish. Um, like, look at my system. There is some peculiarity in the system which I can use to get faster into the solution. Here is an example. I think that would be actually... Uh, a, a very good example. X plus Y plus Z, same example as before actually. X plus 2Y plus Z equals 8, and 2X plus Y is equal to 4. Now, here is something which I observed, I noticed. Subtract uh, the first equation from the second. You see, X and X will eliminate each other, Z and Z eliminate each other, uh, from each other y minus y plus 2y would give you uh, y is equal to 8 minus 6, which is 2, immediately. Right? So, I didn't do all these manipulations, x expressed as 6 minus y minus z, sub substitute into others, into others, etc. I immediately subtracted these two things, one from another, and got the solution. I just noticed it. You know, call it ingenuity. Now, if you substitute it here, you will immediately get that 2x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 1. So this is solution, this is solution. 1 and 2, 1 and 2, so this must be 3. Right? So z is equal to 3. This is a faster method. So sometimes you can notice that this particular elimination thing really gives you a significant uh, saving in the time you have to spend relative to uh, substitution method. But again, it does require certain observance, and obviously not every system of two equations 
can be, you know, solved this way. But some of them can, and it's actually very interesting if you notice that there are certain systems which you will uh, uh, try to solve, and they do uh, possess certain peculiarities which you can use, and use the elimination method to simplify your test. Here is another problem, which is a little bit more, I would say, interesting. Okay, what's good about this system? It's kind of symmetrical, you see? Minus z, minus y, minus x. So it looks, it looks nice. I don't know if people feel certain aesthetical feelings about systems of equations, but if, if, if I would consider that there is some aesthetics, this definitely is part of it. It has certain cyclical symmetric, uh, symmetry, if you wish. How can I solve this particular equation just based on, uh, on, again, some peculiarity of this system? Here is something which I can suggest immediately. Summarize all three of them. You will have x plus x minus x, so you have 1x, y plus y minus y, 1y, and z plus z minus z, 1z. So if I will summarize all three together, I will get x plus y plus z equals to 4, 9. Does it make my life easier? Yes, of course. Because what we can do right now is the following. Look at the difference between this and, let's say, this. If I will subtract from this, I will subtract this, so I will have x and y both eliminating each other, and only z and minus z would be, so it will be z minus minus z equals 9 minus 1. So it's 2z equals to 8, and z is equal to 4, right? Now, if from this I subtract this one, the second equation, my x and z would eliminate each other, and I will have only 2y. I would have y minus minus y is equal to 9 minus 3, which is 9 minus 3, which is 6 to y, so y is equal to 3. Now, finally, if I subtract from this the third equation, my y and z would eliminate each other, and I will have only x minus minus x equals to 9 minus 5, which is 4 to x, x is equal to 2. So, again, this is a simpler um, solution, which is based on uh, this particular method of elimination. I have noticed something peculiar about this particular system. Now, what's interesting is, I would like to solve my original system of two equations, um, which um, the generalized one with A, B, C, and D coefficients. Can I solve it using this method of elimination? Now, I did tell you that there are certain peculiarities which you have to look for, and um, it's very interesting and important, actually, with a system of many equations with many uh, variables. But in case of two, it's actually quite easy to uh, to do uh, to do this particular method of of uh, elimination. Now, how can I how can I do? It? Well, look, this is a times x. This is c times x. So what we can do is we can multiply the first one by c the second one by a, and we will have exactly the same coefficient at x, which means we can then subtract it, right? So, instead of this, we will get this. ACx plus bcy is equal to bc. And this one by a, so it's ACx plus ag y is equal to a cubed. Now, if I subtract them, I will have only y, and the coefficient at y would be ag minus bc. y is equal to 
AQ minus CP, for which Y is equal to AQ minus CP divided by AD minus BC. And if you will compare it with my method uh, uh, of substitution, it's exactly the same thing. But faster, as you see. So again, I have basically shortened my, uh, my solution. Now, if instead of this, I will uh, aim for elimination of y, I would have to multiply this by d and this by b, and then subtract. So it will be adx plus bgy equals gp. And this by B would be BCX plus BGY equals BQ. Uh, now, I subtract them. My Y will be nullifying uh, each other. So I will have AG minus BCX equals uh, DP minus BQ. And X is equal to this divided by this. The same exactly answer as before. So, in case of the system of two equations, the method of elimination actually can work even in the generalized uh, form. In case of a bigger systems, it's slightly more difficult. But you can imagine that there are certain cases when it can be really done. All right, that's basically it about algebraic solutions. I would like to spend a couple of words about graphical solutions, and only in case of two variables. So if I have, again, generalized system of two equations with two variables, I can always um, think about the graphical representation of this and this. So if x and y are coordinates, then what is the representation of this and what is the representation of this? These are straight lines. Now, we were talking about graphs of the functions. These are straight lines. So any linear dependency between x and, x and y constitutes a, a, a straight line. Now, two straight lines can either be parallel to each other or they can coincide with, with each other or they can intersect. Uh, each other. Only in case of intersection, solution is one and only a unique solution to this uh, system of two um, equations. Because on the first line, you have all the pairs of x and y which satisfy this particular equation. On the second line, you have all the x and y pairs which satisfy the second equation. And only in case these lines intersect each other in one and only one point, you can say that the, this point of intersection is coordinates of x and y, coordinates of the point, uh, with uh, uh, coordinates satisfying both equations, this one and this one, because this intersection point belongs to, the, to, both, to both lines. Um, OK. Now, um, well, the question is, under what circumstances um, you have uh, these two lines uh, parallel to each other, or intersecting each other, or coinciding with, with each other? Well, coinciding is simple, when these two equations are exactly the same. So if you have something like, well, the same, or they can be actually factored. So it's basically, if this is the first equation, if the second equation is Ka plus Kb, uh, Kax, I meant, plus Kby is equal to Kp. So if C is equal to Ka with K some number, G is equal to Kb and Q is equal to Kp, but K is exactly the same factor. Obviously, K can be basically reduced, and you will have exactly the same equation twice. So these two uh, lines, in this case, completely coincide with, with, with each other. Now, if they are not like this, but like this, 
where q, where, where q is not the same k multiplied by phi. So these are proportionate left and right, but the right sides uh, are not proportional to each other. So these have certain proportion, proportionality, and the right part is not. Then you will have two parallel lines. And only in case the left parts are completely linearly independent, then you will have one and only one intersection. Well, basically that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about um, systems of uh, linear equations. Um, I would recommend you to reread the notes for this particular lecture. They are on unizor.com in the corresponding section of, uh, of, of, uh, of algebra. Um, and, uh, well, basically, good luck. Thank you.